Santina and Will from Rubble Recycles here on a very sunny but cold day in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really glad that you're here. We know it's been a minute, COVID, lockdown, blah, blah, blah. We all know the story. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> we wanna say thank you so much for all of the online sales, for all of the Australian riders who've shipped their motorcycles to us from all over the country, and to all of you around the world who have sent us your engines and components. That is a massive compliment. We take it that way. And we really appreciate your business. Thank you so much. So today we're going to get into the last of the components in this performance series of videos. Uh, we have talked about all kinds of ways that you can improve the efficiency of your engine, starting with big bores, we've done camshafts to, and altered the cam timing and lift to feed those bigger engines more air. We've done cylinder heads to maximize the combustion chamber efficiency uh, and tuners to you know fine tune them. Uh, clutches to put that power out on the ground. Well, today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the component that controls all the airflow into the engine. And it's one of the key factors in an engine's volumetric efficiency. It's also the rider's direct interface with the engine, and that's the throttle body. So let's get into it. All right, so let's look at the throttle body's parts and function. This is a body the bore size, the diameter, and the shape determines the max flow capability and it affects the airspeed and turbulence at various pressures and throttle openings. The throttle shaft goes through the throttle body like this and the, th the shaft controls the rotation of the throttle plates. So your throttle plates sit inside the bore like this and the plates control the relative size of the opening in the bores. Your throttle pulley connects the cables to the shaft and the cable bracket allows for throttle cable adjustment. Your throttle stop uh, defines throttle zero or idle. The fuel rail holds pressurized fuel from the fuel pump and makes it available for the fuel injectors. So the fuel injectors open and close in timed pulses to deliver accurately metered fuel. The IAC or the idle air controller is a electronically controlled stepper motor and it controls the airflow to the manifold side of the closed throttle plates to control idle speed and it sits right here in the middle and then your throttle position sensor sits down at the end of the shaft and it provides a signal to the ecu that defines throttle position so this takes the rider input and it translates it to the EFI system. Your map port allows the manifold absolute pressure sensor access to the manifold side of the throttle plates. The ECU then uses this signal to determine engine load. All right, so let's take a little more detailed look at some of the function of these parts. When you start the engine and it's idling with the throttle plates closed, it is the position of this idle air control valve that controls all of the airflow from the air cleaner side of the plates on this port through the idle air control valve to the throttle plate side of the throttle body. The motorcycle idles completely off this circuit. The ECU controls this stepper motor to determine the position of this valve. A stepper motor is just a brushless DC motor that instead of spinning like a starter, um, divides its rotation into a number of equal steps and is digitally controlled to manipulate those mechanical parts. So if you watch this valve moving, you'll see it 
it's got kind of a jerky motion where it just steps into place and it can be controlled very precisely uh, by the ECU and that's why these bikes idle so nicely. Now when the rider moves the throttle plate it is now the size and shape of the throttle body and its relative to position to those throttle plates that determines the volume of air available to flow into the intake ports. It also, the size uh, and shape of the throttle body bore also controls the relative smoothness of that airflow across a wide range of throttle openings and all kinds of engine load demands. The throttle position sensor tells the ECU where the throttle plates are in their rotation and this map sensor tells it uh, the manifold pressure. The ECU uses that throttle position along with the manifold pressure uh, and engine RPM to calculate the engine load. Are we accelerating, decelerating, cruising, wide open throttle? What's going on? Now at wide open throttle, it's really only the size and shape of the throttle body along with the size and shape of the intake ports and the valves that determines the volume of airflow available to go into the combustion chambers. This sizing and shape also affects the airspeed and its relative smoothness as the engine load changes as it climbs an RPM. So if you pin the throttle at low RPM, it really is just the size and shape of that throttle body that determines all of the airflow characteristics as the engine RPM comes up. Now the air smoothness in the throttle body and intake port has a dramatic effect on the volume of air available to mix with the fuel in the combustion chamber. Uh, if, a, if the throttle body bore has lumps and bumps and the air has lots of turbulence, that slows things down and prevents air uh, from, you know, prevents the maximum amount of air from getting into the engine. In an ideal world, what you'd really like to have is a smooth tapered velocity stack like hole from the very opening of the intake track right down to the intake valve. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a perfect world. You've got all kinds of other design considerations to deal with and you've got all kinds of variable um, circumstances as the motor's running. So it, building throttle body and intake track designs and, and getting them maximized, is it all has a bit of a balancing act to it. Um, but it is that balancing act that is hypercritical, especially at high performance and wide open throttle. This throttle body and the shape of the intake track and their relative size of the intake valves is the key to horsepower. The original equipment Royal Enfield twin throttle body is a cast alloy unit with 33.5 millimeter throttle plates. By reshaping and increasing the size of a throttle body, we can dramatically increase the engine's ability to breathe. So what are your options? We've done a 36 millimeter overbore of the stock body, but the results were disappointing on the 865 motors. So we have the Revelry Racing 40 millimeter billet throttle body. It improves throttle response and power output through the whole rev range, regardless of engine displacement. Depending on your engine configuration, this can be the best power for dollar modification you can make. While they were developed to perfectly match our big valve cylinder heads for the 865 motors, these throttle bodies also work well on 650 motors and cosmetically, they're beautiful. They plug directly into the stock wiring harness. They use the stock throttle position sensor, idle speed control, and throttle cables. They plug into the stock hose locations for the manifold pressure sensor and the idle air intake. They're supplied without a fuel line and they can be used easily with a variety of tanks and pump configurations for you custom builders. There is an optional fuel line kit for connection to the stock fuel tank and pump. Just tick the stock tank fuel line kit box when you're ordering. Okay, so what can you expect from one of these beautiful throttle bodies? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we have uh, done some very direct comparisons uh, and we have um, three dyno runs on 865s that are almost completely identical. They're all 865s with our CNC big valve cylinder heads. 
The only difference is uh, one of them had the 36 millimeter uh, overboard stock throttle body uh, and uh, the other one had uh, this 40 millimeter throttle body on it. Uh, and then we have another run on that same bike with the rev limiter extended. So the 865 SNS cams, big bore kit, clutch, um, CNC cylinder heads with a 36 millimeter throttle body uh, and a Powertronic made 50, 70 horsepower at 6,230 RPM. The only difference was the throttle body and the other bike made 76 horsepower at 7,400 RPM. Now, when we turned the rev limiter up, the big valve cylinder heads and the throttle body, uh, it made 81 horsepower at 7,850 RPM, and that's where the red line said it at 81. Now, the interesting thing about that is all three of those 865s made in that 60 to 66 foot-pounds of torque range, but the ones with the 40 millimeter throttle body made that torque uh, at a higher RPM. The 36 millimeter throttle body peaked torque at around 48, where the 40 millimeter throttle bodies both peaked torque at 6,000 to 62. So um, that's interesting because when you put those throttle bodies on a high compression 650, things change a little bit. Now we have bolted these throttle bodies on a completely stock 650, uh, it, stock ECU and all, literally just replaced the stock throttle body with one of these and took it out for a ride. It was a brand new bike we were in the process of building so we, haven't, we didn't put it on a dyno, but it started, idled, ran right with the stock ECU, everything, it was very drivable, it just worked fine and felt like it made plenty of power. We have, however, done a comparison on uh, high compression 650s with a stock throttle body versus one of these 40 millimeter throttle bodies. Now these are two literally identical high compression 650 engine builds. They're the SNS kit, the high compression piston kit with the SNS cam. They're both running Powertronic and they both run a two into one exhaust. And they're both running the whole pod air filters uh, and breather kit. The, the bike with the stock throttle bodies in that configuration made 55 horsepower at 7,300 RPM. Um, the one with the 40 millimeter throttle bodies made 58 horsepower at 7,900 RPM. Now the really interesting thing about that changeover is that the bike with the stock throttle bodies made 44, no, almost 45 foot pounds of torque uh, and it peaked that torque at 5,100 RPM. The bike with the bigger throttle body, conventional wisdom would say, oh, you know, it would either make less torque or it would peak torque higher. No, this is with stock heads and stock valve. Both these bikes are stock heads and stock valves, so they have the smaller intake valves in them. The 40 millimeter throttle body peaked torque at 3,700 RPM and carried a very smooth, broad torque curve uh, all the way up. So. Uh, and the, the customer that owns that motorcycle uh, rang me when he got home with it and said, I can't believe it. It's unbelievable how it just changed the personality of this motorcycle. He said it just, he had ridden it with the stock throttle body on it and he brought it back in and we put the 40 millimeter throttle body on it and he just went nuts. It was, he's like, it made a whole new motorcycle. And it really does. The, these throttle bodies can change the personality of the motorcycle entirely and they're great fun. All right, so you've got the lowdown on throttle bodies. This was the last component we wanted to include in our performance series. So our next video will be more of a wrap up. Try to, yeah, we're, we got so many questions through this series. We'll try to, and, and a lot of them are similar or the same, and we'll try to, uh, to go through and kind of summarize those and pile them all together and give you some more of the, uh, what do I get if I do this with that and should I do this or that uh, and what some of those results look like and just sort of share some of the data that we've managed to acquire through this whole process. Yeah, we have experienced a tremendous amount of growth as a result of these videos. Thank you. Uh, we go. have finally uh, employed more people. So we got us a rock star organizer yeah. and we got some more help in the workshop. So hopefully that will free us up. We can do some more product development, more videos, and 
more racing. Please be sure to like, subscribe, uh, ring the bell, share it with your friends. If you love our videos and you'd like to support us, you can click on the buy me a coffee link and make a small donation to thank us for all of our hard work. It all goes to the race fund. <laughs> Uh, we would like to say that we believe time is our most precious resource. So thank you so much for sharing yours with us. Until next time, please remember. If you ain't having fun. You're, you're doing, doing it wrong. wrong. <laughs>